there's announcements, I guess. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> it's good to see everybody today. <laughs> Am I on? I'm yeah, on. there were video announcements. Okay, so. very good. Oh, there's video yeah, announcements. Yeah, yeah. Pardon me. We're just going to keep rolling first, okay? Oh, so, okay. like, good morning. We're just really excited and, like, literally jumping for joy up here over having our first in-person Easter in, like, two years. So we are so glad that you are here this morning. To those of you who are joining us online, thank you, thank you for being with us. Happy Easter to you all. As we are gathered, we give thanks for families who can be gathered together and for families who will gather perhaps a little later today. God's blessings to all of you as we are here today. Um, we do have a children's message today. We you want to say something about that? No, we just haven't had a children's message in two years. And so, like, it's okay to come up here uh, because we're, we're bringing it back uh, as, as an Easter celebration. So. And maybe a quick word about Holy Communion. Um, hopefully this is not confusing, but after we consecrate the elements, uh, we do have two ways in which you can take communion. Uh, one is corporately in your seats. Uh, we will bless it. Uh, and then you can have uh, the, the wafer and the wine, uh, Jesus' body and Jesus' blood, but you can also come forward individually for an individual blessing. Ushers will dismiss you. We'll start with the center aisle or center uh, sections first, and then we'll move to the outside sections, and we'll go to the outside and then up the side aisles uh, when that time comes there. Office. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, we've had a really big week here at church, and so we're, we're resting tomorrow. So if you need anything, call us on Tuesday, because <laughs> the office is closed. <laughs> and why don't we do the other announcements? Okay, That's now the, yeah. we're on the video. Okay, on the video. <laughs> for the week following Sunday, April 17th. Calling all faithful friends. We are looking for individuals or families who are willing to visit some of our shut-in people, share conversation, and Holy Communion too. No experience is necessary. If you have questions, contact Pastor Nate or Pastor Dara. Spring is in the air, and with that we are looking for lawn mowing volunteers. Let me know if you are willing to help on a rotating schedule. We need you. Our worship volunteer sign-up is now available online through the website or click the link in the weekly newsletter. Looking for words of wisdom? We have Bible studies that meet Tuesday or Saturday mornings. Won't you join us? Kakana Electric will be holding an electronics recycling event on Saturday, April 23rd. Our newsletter is packed with information for our church and community. It is delivered on Thursday to your email. If you did not receive it, please let us know by calling us at 920-788-6492. Have a great week. Would you all please stand for our call to worship? Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. This day is not like any other day. Today we slow down. Today we take it all in. Today we rest in good news. This day is not like any other day. Today we are singing. Today we are full to the brim. Today joy cannot be contained. This day is not like any other day. Today the stone was rolled away. Today the women saw the empty grave. Today we know death does not win. This day is not like any other day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And we join together in singing our opening hymn.
in, to have a prayer of confession each week. Not to harp on ourselves or to turn up our guilt, but because we believe that God is not done with us yet. So if you would all join me in a prayer of confession, because God is always listening and God's grace is always full to the brim. God of new life, we are a mixed bag. Oh, need to forward the slides. We have a frozen computer. Keep going. More. <laughs> God of new life, we are a mixed bag. We want to be full to the brim with hope and joy. But often we overflow with comparison and doubt. We want to embody resurrection. But often we'd rather stay the same than begin again. We want to have the courage to be like the women on that Easter morning, to run and speak truth. But often we are weary of courage and uncertain of our own voices. Forgive us for all the ways we remain unchanged. Break into our hearts. Overflow here. With hope we pray. Amen. Now here are these words of forgiveness. Family of faith, if there is life after death, then you can be certain, certain, there is life after this mess. If there is life after mistakes, there is life after doubt. There is new life freely given, and that life is for you. You are forgiven, you are loved, you are claimed. May we live full to the brim in response. Thanks be to God. Let it be so. Alleluia. Amen. We join together in our prayer of the day. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite the little ones to come forward for the children's sermon. Come on up. Do you remember how to do this? We sit on the steps here. I need to grab some things. Yeah, yep, keep going. We're going to go more toward the center. It's been such a long time since we've sat up here. Some of you might not remember what's going on, but here we are. Oh, thank you. Oh, we do need these. We, yes. Okay, so just so everyone else can see too, we've got the events of Holy Week up here, and we're going to do some talking about what all has happened this week. So, you know... The last two years, maybe you've noticed, have been filled with a lot of really big feelings. What are some of the big feelings you have felt in the last two years? What are some feelings you have felt? What have you felt, Mary? You felt scared. Okay, what have you felt? You felt sad. What else have we felt in the last two years? What's a feeling you felt? You've felt what? Frustrated, yeah, that's a big one, yep. Yes, thank you for sharing that. So, in the last week, Jesus has had a really, thank you, oh, sure. Jesus has had a really intense week. So, it started out, last Sunday, he entered into Jerusalem, and people were so excited, and they were waving palms, and they were celebrating, they were yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. So, I want you to take a look at some of the feelings I'm laying out right now. We've got pictures of them. This one is nervous. This one is happy or content. This one is surprised. Let's see, we've got sad. What do you think people were feeling when Jesus was entering Jerusalem? 
Yes, I saw your hand. Come on up here. Why don't you come pick a face of what people were feeling? They were feeling happy. Thank you very much. So we're going to stick the happy face right here. So then a few days later, Jesus had his last supper with his friends. Now, Jesus knew it was his last supper, but his friends didn't quite get that. What do you think the people were feeling at that point? Yes, why don't you come choose one? Come on up, Mary. There's lots of options here. Ooh, yes. She picked nervous. Okay, so people were maybe feeling nervous. What else could they have been feeling that day? Why don't you come pick one? What were people feeling when Jesus had his last supper with his friends? Let's see, this one was surprised. We've got sad. Scared. Oh, you think people could have been feeling scared. Okay, so we're going to stick that up there. So later that night, Jesus was arrested. What do you think he or his friends could have been feeling? Why don't you come pick a face? Yes, she picked sad. Jesus his friend, and his friends were feeling sad at that point. So after he was arrested... Jesus died on a cross. How do you think that felt for people? Why don't you come on up here, pick a face. Oh, we have chosen sad again. That was very sad. I think, too, that that would have also been very scary. I'm going to add that one. Okay, so that happened. And then three days later, Jesus, some women went to the tomb, and they saw that Jesus wasn't there, and that he was alive. How do you think that felt? Why don't you come up and choose? You think the people felt happy, okay? So we're going to put that up. What else could they have been feeling that day? You're going to choose another one. Okay, I, I chose this one. What are you going to... Oh, surprise. Why would they be surprised? You don't know. Why would they have been surprised when they got to an empty tomb? Yes. Right. Usually when you go to a tomb, you expect to see someone there, but Jesus was not there. And as she said, not many people raised from the dead. And I didn't print one out because I wanted to see all of your reactions. One of the things that we feel on Easter is joy. Let me show. I need you to show me your faces of joy. Joy. Yes. Easter is a day for joy because Jesus is alive. And we're going to talk more about that. So I want you to keep an eye and ear out for how you hear about the feelings in our sermon when I talk a little bit. So we've gone through this big roller coaster. We've been happy. We've been sad and scared. We've been sad and it's been up and down. But today is a day for what? Joy. Show me. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, why don't you go ahead and put one hand in the air. Put another in the air. Clap them together. And let's pray. Dear God, thank you for bringing Jesus back to us. We feel so much joy. Thank you for the blessings of Easter. In your name we pray and play. Amen. Now, before you go anywhere, I have some coloring pages on that chair over there. You can go ahead and grab a coloring page so that you can uh, have some fun later today. We'll see you later. coloring pages, would you all please stand for the reading of the gospel? Thank you. 
Our gospel for this Sunday, Easter Sunday, is from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. As we talk through the events of the week, we can think about what a week it was. Grief was in the air. Those who were friends with Jesus knew this feeling, and for a whole two days, they had just been sitting with that. Jesus was crucified two days before the Sabbath, which meant that when they prepared his body and put it in the tomb in the first place, they had to stop at a certain point so that they could observe the Sabbath. And so on the first day of the week, the women showed up at the tomb, carrying their grief along with them in their bodies. Modern models of grief tell us that grief includes a lot of things, including denial, some anger, sometimes people bargain, there's some depression and sadness involved, and then eventually people move into this stage of acceptance and knowing that that loved one and that life as they know it will have moved on and it will be different. And I can't help but wonder if by the time the women showed up at the tomb with their spices, I can't but help but wonder if at some point then, since up to that point, they had moved into the acceptance part. They had to do some things to prepare uh, for being there with their spices. They came prepared with their jars of things that they were going to do. They, can pre they came prepared to mentally and physically take out and uh, do this beautiful ritual of sending their friend Jesus off and saying goodbye. So they had tangible reminders. They could smell it. They could feel it. They could hold it in their hands. And so early on that third day, first day of the week, it was still dawn. The sun was still coming up. The women carried that grief and those tangible reminders. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James and other women, we heard, headed over to Jesus' tomb. And when they got there, we all know what they found. They were expecting to do this thing, and instead, even though they paused for a moment and said, oh, we forgot that this tomb, that there was a big stone here, um, they got to the tomb, and lo and behold, the stone had already been moved away. And that tomb was empty. And I think our young people nailed it when they identified that there was some surprise in the air. 
So of course, of course, our text tells us that these women were perplexed and that they were confused, they were bewildered. And of course, when two men showed up in dazzling clothes, of course, they would have been afraid. Could you imagine that? Just two people showing up at a tomb where you were expecting to see your friend and all of a sudden, like, shiny clothes show up? Of course, they were afraid. The two women came with their grief to do this sober thing, and they found an empty tomb. Not only an empty tomb, but two men who were wearing clothes as fine as they had ever seen, and they were there to tell them that Jesus has risen. He is alive. So I wonder at what point the women's emotions turned from confusion to pure joy. Did it happen right away? Did it happen right when the men asked, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here but has been risen. Is that when they felt the joy? Or did it happen when the two women reminded them of what Jesus had already told them a while ago? Is that when, they, when it really hit them? Or, or at some point did the joy set in on their return journey back from the tomb when they were about to tell everyone what had happened? When did the joy settle in? When did their hearts begin to beat a little bit faster? And at what point did the smiles come across their faces to the point where they were plastered on there and they couldn't stop smiling? At what point did their words quicken as they told the male apostles who originally wrote the story these women were telling them off as an idle tale? These days, I spend a lot of time with teenagers of our congregation doing ministry with them. And I always know when they're sharing a story with me that they're excited about because they start to talk a little bit faster and then there's big mannerisms that come out and then they're smiling. And that's when they're sharing moments of their lives that brought them joy. So when I think about those women coming back to share that story of what they had just experienced with the male apostles, in my head, I have joy-filled teenagers in my mind. And if you have spent any time with any joy-filled teenagers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The joy of in the moment and in the story sharing is palpable. And at the end of the day, for those women who were at the tomb, there was nobody who got to steal their joy. There was nobody who was going to tell them that that tomb was not empty. And there was nobody who was going to tell them that their friend, Jesus, was not alive. One of the critiques I often hear about liturgical churches, which our church is a liturgical church, though not super high liturgy, and that we're good with that. One of the critiques I often hear is that our way of worshiping, our way of doing, our way of being is like stiff and boring and rote, and it doesn't seem to contain a lot of feeling or emotion, and we're not considering what we're doing. And honestly, honestly, sometimes that's a fair critique. I will say that. But on this day, on this day of all Sundays in the church year, when we gather for worship, this day is the day where we get to feel the joy from deep within our bones. We get to feel the good news of the resurrection in the same way that our, our little ones shared with us the feelings that they have felt over the last two years. Today, we get to feel the joy of being together here to celebrate an empty tomb. Because just like the events of Holy Week, like we talked about, life every day is a roller coaster of emotions. A roller coaster of things that we feel so deeply in our bones. 
I want you to take a second just to think about like a day in your life. Think about how it starts from the moment you wake up to the moment it ends. It's not always pretty. I know in my house, we have a toddler who's still potty training. And um, as much joy and peace I might be feeling as I sleep, um, the second that door, my bedroom door slams open and I hear the words, I have pee, the joy is no longer in the day. <laughs> and from there, once we start our day, we are a household where I will admit to you that folding laundry is not always high on the priority list, which means we spend a lot of mornings digging through piles of clean clothes. And that takes on a roller coaster of its own from there. Because we're all human, right? That's the roller coaster of life, and that's the roller coaster of emotion. And so in any given day, we can feel annoyed, we can feel frustrated, we can feel scared. We can feel all the things, and slowly throughout the day, our joy can be stolen from us. There are so many things in this world that have the ability to steal our joy. For Jesus' friends who were witnesses to his crucifixion, the joy that they had in their friendship with, with Jesus, that was stolen from them. But when they got to the empty tomb, Slowly, the grief turned into confusion, the confusion turned into fear, and then fear somehow, someway, turned into joy. And that is the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's a place in another part of the Gospel of John, Jesus is gathered with his friends, He's talking for a really, really, really long time. He's, has, it's like a Midwestern goodbye that's happening. We call it the farewell discourse. And at some point in there, uh, Jesus says to his friends, and he, he tells them exactly what's going to happen. He says, so with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. Nobody is going to steal this joy that we feel today on this day of the resurrection. Because if we have a God who can defy death by dying on a cross and then come back to life again, then also that means that we have a God on our hands who has the power to take away all of our grief, our sadness, our anger, our frustration, and our fear, and can take all of that emotional roller coaster and turn it into joy, into new life, into seeing the world through a lens of hope. So I hope at some point throughout today, you have a second just to pause and to consider what does resurrection joy feel like in your life? Does it feel like a smile that's plastered on your face that nobody can take away? Is it the feeling of freedom and peace that you get when you're doing that one thing in the world that you absolutely love to do? Is resurrection joy for you? The excitement and the stories that you'll share over your Easter meals today with your family. Maybe for you, the resurrection joy is just being here to see another day. That is what Easter feels like. That is what resurrection feels like. And my friends, nobody gets to steal that joy from you. All throughout this Lenten season, we have been using the theme full to the brim. And the whole purpose of this theme was to expand the way that we think about Lent and to expand the way that we think about God and what God is doing up to, what God is doing in our lives. And sometimes, my dear siblings in Christ, expanding the way that we think about God means that we expand how far we lean into the joy. Lean in. Because the joy of the resurrection is joy that nobody gets to take away from you. Nobody gets to steal our joy today. Thanks be to God.
let's stand for our next song. God's expansive love for each and every one of us here in this Easter time. It is now our opportunity to confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us do so together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our prayer song. We will sing that, uh, share our prayers, and then sing it one more time.
this day of resurrection, we let joy reign in our hearts as we offer our prayers for ourselves, for our neighbors, for our world. Let us pray. Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all of the baptized the same excitement as the woman at the tomb and inspire us to share your abundant and expansive life. Sustaining God, your creation abounds with signs of new life in budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants, and provide farmers with a plentiful harvest. Gracious God, you are a sheltering God. As our world teeters on the edge with warring differences and skirmishes between sides and trying to understand truth, may your salvation strengthen and sustain all who support vulnerable people across the world. Gracious God, empower government agencies and international organizations that provide for refugees and migrants forced to leave their homelands. Help people to find solutions to differences, to be at peace and to be gathered and united in the hope of your resurrection. Encouraging God, you do new things each and every day, making us new. We pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety and those who suffer in any way. Send us your healing presence, especially to places where there is hunger where there is pain, where there is illness, where there is overwhelming sorrow. Thank you for blessing us with faithful witnesses who now rest in you. Make us all together alive in Christ. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace Give this community of faith a sense of joy and wonder in exploring new avenues of faith formation, of worship, stewardship, discipleship. And now we take a few moments to offer our prayers aloud or in the silence of our hearts in these moments. Gracious God, we offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your abundance and ever-present mercy. May we all say amen, amen. peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share those signs of peace with one another this morning.
As we share our signs of peace, we give thanks that this continues on. Uh, keep going, but uh, there are ways in which to uh, support ministry. Uh, the offering baskets are in the back of the church, middle aisle, uh, for you to share in your offerings. There are many other ways to give online, and uh, we give thanks for your faithfulness as we do give our gifts to God. We now prepare for our time of Holy Communion, so if you have your, your bags and your cups, we, we can get that out so it's ready. And just a reminder, this table is not the pastor's table, not Christ the King's table, it is the Lord's table, and we invite all who are gathered here today to be joined and united in the joy of Christ's death and resurrection as we are gathered today. For those who are, are not taking communion but would like a blessing, we do encourage our young ones or others to come forward and we will share a blessing over them as well. We continue now with our great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for your glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene, with Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all creatures, with all angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim. We praise your name and we remember. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So before we eat and before we drink, we remember the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray and continues to teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For those who would like to have communion in your seats, the body of Christ given for you, you may eat the wafer. And the blood of Christ shed for you, you may now drink the juice. Congregation then may be seated, and those coming forward for an individual blessing come at the direction of the ushers. Oh 
my face to the rising sun. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. Let us praise God together. praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy on me. stand for the blessing. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. May we say amen. 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 We will share the benediction at this time and uh, our tradition here is to uh, join hands with those whom we are gathered with, and we can extend our hands as if we are joined with everyone this day. Um, some people are joining hands, others are not, so uh, whatever, whoever is next to you, if they would like to join hands, go for it. If not, we'll respect that, and together we are united through the gift of the Spirit. As you leave this place, may you be awestruck by the beauty of this world. May your laugh be contagious. May you overflow with love for those who are around you. 
May you be effusive with hope and quick to point out joy. And in all of your living and breathing and being, may you find yourself full to the brim with God's Holy Spirit. May it change your life. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, go in peace, full to the brim. Amen. Thine is the glory is our sending song. Let us sing with great joy.